Hi everyone, so let's continue with this topic about how to um, explain the existence of certain molecules where just using the simple valence bond model, which is the overlap of standard atomic orbitals, would not uh, be able to uh, explain why these molecules exist and why we see them the way they are in terms of bond angles and structure. So what I mentioned before was that in order to um, be able to explain <coughs> why these molecules exist, you have to use this new concept called hybrid atomic orbitals. So first off, let's talk about what hybrid atomic orbitals are. So they're basically uh, a combination of atomic orbitals that you have in a particular atom, as you'll see in a second. So for example, if you have an atom that has uh, s orbital with electrons, and you, you might also have a p orbital with electrons, what you uh, might do is you might combine the orbitals in the s uh, the s orbital and the p orbital to form this hybrid orbital which then would have features of both the s and the p orbitals together okay and that's what we refer to as hybrid orbitals so you might combine s and p you might combine one s with one p orbital forming one type of hybrid orbital you might combine one s orbital with uh, two p orbitals and then therefore you get another type of hybrid orbital and so on okay now this process where you're combining the different uh, valence orbitals in that that particular atom is referred to as linear combination a linear combination is actually a mathematical uh, process uh, and it's sort of similar to adding waves together because remember that these orbitals are really represented by wave functions and wave functions, of course, represent waves, represent standing waves. So you can think of this as being, you know, adding the uh, waves that is represented by a particular wave function in an atom with another wave, uh, another wave function in that uh, same atom. Okay, so that's what linear combination is. And you can add, again, different types of combination. You, can, you might add, you know, 1s with 1p, 1s with 2p, maybe 1s and 3p, and so on. So the way we're going to do this is the following. The way we're going to form this hybrid orbitals is going, to, uh, is going to be as follows. We're going to start by looking at the electron configuration of the atom of interest. Let's say in this particular case we're interested in carbon. So what we might do is we might look back at carbon and think about how can we rearrange this electron configuration in such a way that we are going to be able to form a, a carbon atom that can form four bonds, right? Because right now, if we just stay with this, we're, we can only form two bonds, okay? So if you think about it uh, a little bit, hopefully that would kind of give you an idea that if we were to take one of these electrons in the s orbital and we move that electron to the p orbital, okay? To the p orbital that's empty here, then we should have four single electrons, right? Three in the p orbitals and one in the s orbital. So in, as a matter of fact, that's what people do when they try to uh, create hybrid orbitals. The first step is to do something referred to as a promotion. Okay, so promotion just means you're taking an electron uh, and you're promoting it to the next level orbital. But remember that the next orbital is always higher in energy. So as a result, you're basically putting something that's lower in energy to something that's higher in energy okay so that's gonna this step is going to cost you some energy right in order to do to take an electron and put it in a in a 2p from a 2s you're gonna need to put in some energy to do that because 2p orbital is less stable than 2s orbital now we're gonna talk about how this energy is gained back and really it's gained back by it's gained back by making bonds right because every bond you make you're lowering the energy of the system because the bond is basically you're improving the electrostatic interaction between the nuclei of the atoms and the electrons that are in the molecule so by making more bonds you're basically lowering the energy of the system overall so that's how this energy cost is paid for but first off you're, you're gonna make these uh, these you know three electrons here and you're gonna have one electron in the 2s now that alone is not enough right because you're not going to stop there, even though at that point you would have four orbitals with single electrons. And you might say, well, you know, that's good enough because that's my goal initially. I wanted to have a, a carbon that can form four bonds. The issue there, if you just stop there, if you just take this one electron and put it right here, and you have 
you know, four electrons, one of them is in, a, in an s orbital and the other three are in the p orbitals, you're not going to generate a molecule that looks like this. And the reason is because this molecule, all the, all the angle, all the HCH bond angle, right, all these four angles right here, are all 109.5 degrees. If you think about it, if you have an s, uh, an s orbital and three p orbitals, the molecules that's generated by those four bonds is not going to be all the same because one of the overlaps will be a 2s overlap and the other three would be 2p overlaps. So they're not going to generate, you know, give you the same bond angles. In fact, three of them will be 90 degrees with respect to each other and then the s would then be a, a, a different angle uh, entirely, okay? So then it doesn't make sense to just stop there after that promotion step. What you need to do is to make all four of these the same orbitals, right? That's the only way, if you make all four of them the same orbitals, that's the only way that you're going to get a molecule where all the angles are the same, right? So that's the second step in a, in a hybrid orbital formation, is you do something referred to as mixing or hybridization. So this is where you do your linear combination step. So remember what I said about linear combination, it's just a mathematical uh, process where you're adding the wave function that corresponds to you know, 2px, 2py, 2pz, and then the 2s, right, because that's all the different orbitals that have um, single electrons, and you add them all together in this linear combination, and then what you get as a result of doing that mathematical process is you get four orbitals, and these four orbitals is a mix of these four orbitals that start with. So you always get the same number of orbitals that you put in. So you put in four, you get four out, okay? In all four orbitals, you're gonna have single electrons as we saw earlier. However, the difference is that these four or orbitals are all the same type. They're all the same type of orbitals. Now, if you think about the energy of this orbital, it's going to be in between the 2p and the 2s orbital. Why is that? That should make sense to you, right? Because the 2s is more stable than the 2p. When we do this mixing, what we're doing is basically we're putting in a little bit of s into each of these p orbitals, and then the last bit of s is then combined with the other three p orbitals to form the fourth uh, hybrid orbital. So because there is some mixture of s and p in each of these hybrid orbitals, the energy is not going to be exactly as high as a 2p, but it's also not going to be as low as a 2s. It's going to be somewhere in between, but probably more close to 2p than it is to 2s because there's a lot more p's than there is s. There's three p's and one s in each of these orbital. Okay, so that's the character of this orbital is that there is, you know, uh, out of, you know, four parts, right? Three parts is p, one part is s, okay? So as you see, the name makes a lot of sense. The name of this orbital is called sp3 because there's one part s and three parts p. So it's called sp3 orbitals and there's four sp3 orbitals as a result of making this hybridization, okay, or this mixing. Now, once you make this hybridization, you now have a carbon atom that basically has four hybrid orbitals, okay? That carbon atom is shown here in black. So forget, forget the blue stuff right now. Just look at the black one right here, okay? So that's just the carbon atom. The carbon atom now has these four new hybrid atomic orbitals. And they are oriented as a tetrahedral structure, as it turns out, when you make this calculation. Which is, of course, what we know the structure of methane would be, okay? So then in order to make that methane structure now, the only thing you need to do is have an overlap for each of the sp3 orbital with a 1s orbital from a hydrogen atom, which is what these blue stuff are, okay? So then when you have this, then this particular drawing right here represents the CH4 molecule or the methane molecule, okay? So in this particular case, if I want to describe this particular molecule, I would say there's four sigma bonds. This is sigma bonds because the overlap, you draw a uh, internuclear axis here between hydrogen and the carbon. You notice that you, you can rotate through that and it will be cylindrically symmetric. So that would be a, a, a sigma bond. And then since there's four of them, there's four sigma bonds. And the structure is a, a, te it's a tetrahedral structure. And that, of course, matches what we observe experimentally with um, 
methane, which is a 4CH bond, and it's tetrahedral, thereby resulting in a 1 point, you know, 109.5 degree angle. Okay, so let's go back to this idea about hybrid orbitals again. So you can make molecules, in other words, you can represent bonding in certain molecules instead of just using standard orbitals overlapping with another standard orbital. You can, in this case, represent bonding by having a hybrid atomic orbital overlapping with a standard atomic orbital, right? Because that's what this is. This atom uses a hybrid orbital. The other atom uses a standard orbital, okay? The hydrogen uses the 1s orbital, which is standard. Carbon uses sp3, which is hybrid. Later on, you'll see examples where you can also do uh, hybrid and hybrid. So you might have an overlap where you have a hybrid atomic orbital for one atom and another hybrid atomic orbital from the other atom. Okay, we'll see that for things like you know ethane, for example, the the carbon-carbon overlap would be overlaps of two hybrid atomic orbitals. Um, so I just want to re, you know review or or kind of summarize these steps that I just talked about in terms of forming a hybrid orbital from one atom, right? You start with the electron configuration of the atom, as we did earlier with the carbon. We promote, which really means we take one or more electrons from a lower energy orbital to a higher energy orbital, the next higher energy orbital. So we, what we did with the carbon is we took one from 2s and put it up in the 2p. And then what we do is we perform this linear combination step. We basically take all orbitals that have single electrons and mix them up together. Mixing in this case have very specific meaning. It actually, it's, it's actually a mathematical step, meaning taking the wave function that represents the s and the p orbitals and doing a specific mathematical step with them. And then the, uh, what you get out of that process is you get the same number of hybrid orbitals as the ones that you put in, uh, except that now the new hybrid orbital is going to have a mix, uh, you know, a hybrid feature, which means that it's going to have characters from all the different atomic orbitals, standard atomic orbitals that you put in to make it, okay? So that's the concept of hybrid or atomic orbitals. In the next video, we're going to talk about other types of atomic orbitals. We just, we, so far, we've only talked about the sp3 hybrid atomic orbitals, but there's other ones as well, which I'm going to talk about. And then we're going to then apply it in the context of an example.